Let's turn right now to community groups rallying right now outside of a Chicago police station to show their support for Reed's family. Also to call for those officers involved to be fired. NBC 5's Natalie Martinez live tonight at the 11th District Station in Homan Square to show us what's going on right now. Natalie. Yeah, and Stefan, the significance of the 11th district, of course, is that this is where those tactical officers who were involved in this shooting are based. So, as you said, they're getting ready for a rally here. You can see some of the people behind me gathering. A couple of the guys that you see there in orange were chanting, Dexter Reed shot Chicago police. But quickly, supporters countered, chanting, no justice, no peace. Supporters and Dexter Reed's family are here for that 6 p.m. rally for the 26-year-old. Now, taking a look Look at that body cam video. It shows 96 rounds involved in the controversial case. Now, according to COPA spokesperson, who you talked about just a moment ago, it shows Dexter Reed firing the first shot. Supporters here question the use of force with the dozens of following shots fired. Now, family, who we spoke to earlier, expressed outrage. They want the tactical officers involved in last month's Garfield Park shooting disbanded. They feel that a seatbelt violation doesn't call for such force and that COPA report you're talking about and family, they also question a seatbelt violation through dark tinted windows. I'm hurt. I'm sick. I feel like I've been shot. My insides is burning up. If he was supposed to get pulled over for a traffic stop, why did they have four guns pointed at him? He was scared. Attorneys are asking for a criminal indictment for at least one of the officers involved. And also that rally that we are talking about is just getting underway right now. We will wrap that up for you and bring you even more coming up at 10 o'clock. For now, we're live in Homan Square. Natalie Martinez, NBC5 News. Natalie, thank you. My name is Andrew M. Stroth. I'm a civil rights attorney, managing director of Action Injury Law Group, which is a national civil rights law firm headquartered in Chicago. Honored to be here with my co-counsel partner, Stephen Hart, from Hart, McLaughlin & Eldridge. My other co-counsel partner, Sheila Betty, from Northwestern University School of Law and the Community Civil Rights Clinic. We're also here, you can see behind me, the family and extended family of Dexter Reed. We have Nicole Banks, his mother, Portia Banks, Dexter's sister, Julius, uh, Dexter's father, Dexter Banks Sr., other uncle Roosevelt Banks and other family and friends. Let's take a minute and talk about who Dexter Reed was. He was 26 years old, played basketball at Westinghouse, led the team to a regional championship. Dexter later became a student athlete at Morton College where he obtained his associate's degree. His friends and family affectionately called him Buki. Dexter enjoyed playing hoops, he enjoyed healthy eating. He enjoyed cooking. He loved spending time at his sister Portia's shop. Dexter's goal was to be a broadcaster. So let's talk about why we're here today and why Mayor Johnson and State's Attorney Kim Fox and Chief of COPA just gave their press conference. We're here today because on March 21st, something really tragic happened in the city of Chicago. What we witnessed on the video that we watched with the family yesterday was tactical officers, plain clothes, unmarked SUV, wearing hoodies and baseball caps, pulling over Dexter for not wearing a seatbelt. These officers never announced they were police officers. And then what we witnessed, Dexter got out of his car, unarmed, and was shot by the police. Based on the COPA report that you all received this morning, 96 rounds were fired by these officers. So let's say that again. 96 rounds were fired by these tactical officers. And what also happened is if you watch the end of the video, you see an officer military style executing Dexter while he laid by his vehicle, unarmed and helpless. Last Friday, at the funeral, this family said their last goodbyes to Dexter. Now that this family has watched the video and seen the evidence, we are demanding action. We also believe that Mayor Brandon Johnson is committed to change. We believe that under his leadership, Chicago can change. 
He spoke with the family on Saturday afternoon. He committed to a full and transparent investigation. So where do we go next? We're asking the Johnson administration to commit to the consent decree. Sheila Betty and her team, Craig Futterman and his team have worked tirelessly to advance the consent decree and there's been a total lack of compliance. We're specifically asking the mayor and police chief Snelling to disband these tactical units that have been terrorizing communities, folks in communities on the west and south sides. We're also asking that Superintendent Snelling strip the officers involved with this fatal and unjustified shooting. We're asking Chief Kirsten from COPA to continue her investigation. We're also asking, if you watch it, the objective video evidence that State's Attorney Kim Fox moved swiftly to get justice for this family in what we think there should be a criminal indictment against some of these officers. We're also asking Mayor Johnson to work with government officials in Springfield to advance legislation related to disciplinary police actions that keep those hearings public and in the open for all of us to see and witness. This family doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. This family also doesn't want any violence in this city based on this incident. What we know is what started on March 21st as a pretextual, unconstitutional, and unreasonable search, and then 96 shots later, and then three or four additional shots shot into Dexter is unimaginable. And that's why this family and we are here today. Dexter is not here because of the actions and inactions of this administration and this police chief. How many more young black and, brown, black and brown young men need to die before this city will change? We're asking for a collective commitment from the city and community stakeholders to advance change. Next, I want to introduce my co-counsel partner, Stephen Hart. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Hart from the law firm of Hart, McLaughlin, and Eldridge. It's a very important day in this city. The city, COPA, the state's attorney have all made statements relating to the shooting of Dexter Reed. It's now the family's turn to address the media. It cannot be lost on the public that the Reed family lost their beloved son, brother, nephew. He was precious to them. And what's worse is that he lost his life at the hands of those that took an oath to serve and protect him. The explanation that we're getting today is that Dexter was pulled over for failing to wear his seatbelt. Now, this leaves many, many questions. Why were tactical officers jumping out of an unmarked police car with their guns drawn for a simple traffic violation of not wearing your seatbelt. Dexter did not run. There was no chase. They asked him to roll down his window. He did. And in response, he got guns in his face for not wearing a seatbelt. To us, to the family, that sounds disproportionate. It sounds pretextual. There is a problem with policing in this city when five tactical officers jump out of an unmarked police car brandishing their weapons for a young man that wasn't wearing his seatbelt. What's worse is the city has a long and sordid history of trampling on the rights of black people in this city. There have been multiple lawsuits filed, class action lawsuits, 
declaratory lawsuits. They've been filed by the Department of Justice, by institutions of higher learning, the Police Accountability Task Force, run by our former mayor, addressed the stop and frisk policies of this city. There is something very wrong about the manner in which the Chicago Police Department is policing our minority and underprivileged neighborhoods. And this is but another glaring and tragic example of the police policies and practices being instituted and they led to the death of a 26 year old young man for not wearing a seat belt. I'll offer one more thought. The police department in this city often suggests that they have a right to discharge their firearms when they perceive a threat against them. Imagine a 26-year-old not having known what he did wrong and having five guns pointed at him. Do you believe he was frightened? Do you think his security and health and safety was threatened? So oftentimes we hear in unjustified shootings that officers felt they were at risk that there was danger because someone was pointing a gun at them. Yet when they create the same set of circumstances, they fire away 96 times in 41 seconds. They fire away 40 times on an unarmed man outside his vehicle. And finally, they fire away after reloading their clips three times on a young man who was lying on the ground having already been shot multiple times. It doesn't seem right to this family. It should not be comfortable for the citizens of Chicago. And so we're asking for a dialogue with the city, an important dialogue. We'd like to thank COPA for looking closely at this shooting. We have confidence that they'll investigate it thoroughly, and when they do, they'll bring the appropriate charges. We'd like to thank Kim Fox for her courage uh, in what she has to uh, review in the next couple of weeks. And uh, now so, I'd like to ask. Uh, so Sheila Betty, Northwestern School of Law, Community Justice Clinic is going to speak, um, given her background on Manel violations in the city. So you, you already heard that the Reed family had to endure the unimaginable tragedy of watching Chicago police officers shoot their beloved Dexter Reed 96 times. But like all acts of police violence, this isn't just about the wrongdoing of these individual officers. It's about the violence that is inherent in policing and about the systemic deficiencies within the Chicago Police Department. Those videos demonstrate numerous serious systemic deficiencies that have not been remedied despite the millions of dollars that have gone into the consent decree. Let's start with the TAC teams. 2017, the United States Department of Justice documents in its investigation that TAC teams are violent, aggressive, racist. Excuse me. Go ahead, Sheila. Go ahead, Sheila. 2017, the United States Department of Justice documents in its report TAC teams are violent, aggressive, racist. I am quoting the Department of Justice. Chicago Police Department TAC teams are out on the hunt. That is precisely what happened to Dexter Reed. Ununiformed officers, unmarked cars, a traffic stop for a seatbelt that begins with officers guns out, pointing, screaming commands. Next, let's talk about de-escalation. Every single thing, every single police officer did in this encounter escalated it over and over. From coming out of the car with their guns out, to screaming commands, to brandishing their weapons inside the window, escalating over and over and over again. Then of course there's the use of force, which lacked proportionality. None of those officers saw Dexter Reed as a beloved community member, son, nephew. They saw him as prey, 
and that was reflected in the 96 shots. After Dexter was lying on the ground, bleeding out, they did not render him the aid that they are required to do. They allowed him to lay there and didn't aid him as is required by the consent decree, as is required by the law. These are not just the actions of individual bad officers. These are the result of systemic deficiencies that have persisted, despite the millions of dollars that have been invested in police reform, in the consent decree, in the accountability apparatus. Justice for Dexter Reed requires changing these policies for once and for all and an end to the empty platitudes. Thank you. Now we're going to hear from Portia Banks, P-O-R-S-C-H-A Banks, B-A-N-K-S, the sister of Dexter Reed. We just want answers. Regardless of the person that they try to portray Dexter as, he was not one of those. Why does the police keep doing this to young black African men? If he was supposed to get pulled over for a traffic stop, why did they have four guns pointed at him? He was scared. And after he was already on the ground, dead, they still put him in cuffs instead of checking to see was he breathing. They shot at him 96 times. They reload the clip three times. It must stop. It ain't the first person it happened to. And if it don't be justice, if they not held accountable, it won't be the last person. I really can't explain the pain that me and my family is going through. But I just hope that it's people out there that understand he was a son, he was a brother, he was an uncle, he have loved ones. He was somebody very important. And he was not in the streets. And the image that they're trying to portray him to be, that was not him. And everybody that know him knows Dexter was a loving young guy. He was very, very mannerable. And I hate that this happened to us. And I hope that they can hold these detectives accountable, the 11th district accountable, the jump out, whatever they call them, to be five deep in the car. If it was a traffic arrest, and he was to get arrested, where was he going to sit? If it's three in the back and two in the front, where was he going to sit? I don't think that that's what they was trying to do. <clears throat> I don't know, but I just hope that my brother gets justice. Not for the family, but for everyone else out here that had to go through the same thing. They should just take them off the streets. Because if they don't, it's going to keep happening. Constantly happening. And it's not fair. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to the others. And as well as they have family, if they want to go home to his family, he could have went home to his family as well. That's all I got to say. So we're going to now hear from Roosevelt Banks, the uncle of Dexter Banks. Uh, Dexter guess, Reed. Dexter Reed. Roosevelt Banks. I just want to say... After looking at the video footage yesterday and seeing police officers jump out of a vehicle with hoodies on, guns drawn, if I was in that situation, I would be terrified. I wouldn't know how to specifically react other than to protect myself, if that was the case. But just to know that after he was shot up in the car, he got out of the car and then proceeded to put his hands up and you shot him more times as he fell and then you continued as you added clips to your gun. That is nothing but plain murder to me. Murder. And see, if, if, if anybody that understands this department in the Chicago, uh, this has always been the same thing and so if we don't at some point try to exercise the federal government to conduct an investigation on not just the police that did that to my nephew but the 11th district which is known for years 
to have this same history of violence against people of color. And, and, I, and I want my nephew's name to never be forgotten. And I want the city and this country to change the way they police our citizens. Because if you don't, at some point, there'll never be another way of ending this. And I just want to say, I miss my nephew. He was an athlete. He was a special person. He, 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 he prided himself on and being healthy, exercising. And so to lose him in that manner with someone that you're supposed to have been protected by, it just leaves a, 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 a part in my, in my soul that will never be able to be replaced. And I just want to say justice for my nephew. Justice for Dexter. 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 Dexter Reed. Dexter Reed Sr. is going to speak for a minute. Go ahead, Dexter. How you all doing? Yes. Yes. It was an unfortunate accident on March 21st. I just talked to my son that day, like at 5:59. You know, I didn't know that 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 was going to be his last words to me. You know, and uh, I'm very hurt. I'm very hurt right now. And uh, and I talked to Mayor Johnson uh, Sunday, and and I, I explained to him that uh, that those officers need to be held accountable. You know, and those and those officers need more training. You got young guys that's uh, two years, five years experience. You know, and and I seen the tape yesterday, and how they approached the car. You know, you know. And, and it wasn't the proper protocol, you know. First of all, the way she came to the car, aggressive, using profanity, and then he rolled his window down. Then the other, the other officer come on the side, trying to intimidate him, stuff like that. You know, my son probably was scared, you know. And, and it's, been, it's been a known fact in Chicago that police always target black and brown communities, people, you know. And as my son got out pleading for help, they shot 96 times? Yeah, it's too much. And then about two rounds? Come on, two. I'm watching that. It doesn't matter how your kids would feel if they got shot like that, you know. And uh, and even when he was falling on the ground, pleading for help, begging, they still kept shooting. And when he was on the ground, I still had extra four shots. But it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. And uh, we need change. We need change in the city with the police reform, you know. Yeah. Yeah, walking to a car, you know, hoodies on, on civilian clothes. Come on now. Uh, we need to straighten this out. And I just want to suggest it for my son. I want to see the officers held accountable. That's all I got to say. So, uh, uh, Nicole, Nicole Banks, mother of Dexter Reed. So stay, make sure you stay with her portion. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, I just miss my son. I'm hurt. I'm sick. I feel like I've been shot. My insides is burning up. Why they did that to my son? They didn't have to do him like that. I love my son. He's a good kid. He played basketball. He always had something to do every day. He wake me up in the morning right. and he fixed me food. He was sure he had to cook his stuff. And he told me, Mama, you eat something and stuff like that. When I didn't feel good, he say exercise. He bought a Peloton bike for me to exercise. And he was a, a good kid. And why they did him like that, I just don't understand. What is wrong with the police? Why are they doing all these kids pulling them over with no, you know, for no reason? All these kids, illegal stops, they don't do nothing all the time. They just be outside trying to find their way. He had just bought his new car three days before that. And he was just riding around in his car. He said, Mom, go for a ride. And they killed him. They killed him. Thank you, 
Gibson. I'm sorry. So let me speak. Okay. Uh, this is James Gibson, tortured by John Burge and the Midnight Crew. Hello, everyone. My name is James Gibson. Enough! America! 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 How come y'all hate us so much? How come y'all hate us so much? We doing everything. We did everything y'all told us to do. Put your hands up. Put them up. And y'all still shooting us. America! 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 How come y'all hate us so much? Enough. There's no more need for investigations. The video clearly shows they shot the they shot the man on the ground. They jumping out gang banging with hoodies. With hoods on. America! 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 How come y'all? 